Okay, after the uh, last lecture, which was on the oligonucleotide synthesis, we now come to the uh, to uh, come to uh, critically see that how the central dogma of biology uh, involves different different processes, different chemistry uh, to for the flow of information from DNA to the protein. Okay. Now, what is central dogma in biology? That before the cell divides, it has to do certain certain uh, processes and the first process that it has to do is the replication of the copy of the existing DNA in the cell. Okay. And then once this copy, this copy of DNA into its own copy is called replication. So, that is the first step because when you have only one cell and that goes to two cells, both have the pieces of the DNA. So, there has to be copy of the original DNA that was present in the cell. Now, the replication is the first step and then this DNA has to be transcribed into RNA. Specifically, there are several classes of RNA, we have not talked about RNA yet. Let us just uh, for the time being uh, consider only messenger RNA. So, the DNA makes mRNA that means, the messenger RNA and transcription of of course, transcription of DNA to RNA is what is uh, is what is called transcription. That means, conversion of DNA to RNA to any RNA it could be messenger RNA, it could be ribosomal RNA or it could be tRNA the, the transfer RNAs and that is what is called transcription. And then after that from the messenger RNA with the help of these two the R RNA that is the ribosomal RNA and the tRNA it forms the protein. And this process is what is called translation. Now, this you have heard possibly you have read in the biology books at your uh, at the lower level, okay. but we will talk about the, uh, the, the chemistry that goes on uh, in these three processes. One is replication, another is transcription and translation. So, the first thing that we should do is replication. Okay. Now, in replication again the, the most important point before anything can be uh, can be said about replication or can be studied is the that when the DNA is when the DNAs are, are replicated the question is it will go to it will go to now two sets of double strand DNA. Okay. So, there are now the new so some new strand has to be created. So, one possibility is that the new strand is, is forming double strand with the with the old strand or it could be that the old strands remain coupled with each other means remain uh, double strand with each other or and the and the new ones also are are forming double strand with each other okay so that is another possibility and there is a third possibility which is that the that a portion of the uh, portion of the strands consist of consist of part of the old and the new strand something like this. So, these are the three possible uh, actually this should be double stranded. So, I have not done this, but this is the possibility. So, this is uh, one possibility, this is another possibility and this is the third possibility. So, basically three possibilities exist. Now, first we have to sort out that what is this uh, when DNA is copied, what is the 
uh, status of this copying, whether it is this is what is called conservative. Conservative means the old strands remain with each other and the new strands or the daughter strands remain with each other and uh, this is called conservative. This is what is called semi conservative, where the old and the new combine with each other may form a double helix. So, that is semi conservative and this is what is called dispersive, when each strand is composed of old and the new portions of old and the new. Okay. So, this is this is what uh, we are saying that if you have sorry where is that slide you know. So, you have this um, again I repeat that there are all these processes are shown here if it is conservative and if you started with uh, suppose your DNA initial DNA is colored like this and the um, and the new DNAs when it is made the new DNAs uh, it is colored like that. Okay. So, what will happen in conservative replication that you have the old DNA which are already uh, we are which are together to form the double helix and you have the sets of new DNA strands that which are uh, also forming double helix with each other or tied up with each other. So, now uh, if you suppose DNA is contain lot of nitrogens because the, ni uh, the nitrogens are all uh, they are in the bases and each base contains more than one nitrogen. So, if you grow a bacteria uh, grow a bacteria where the food source that means uh, the nitrogen source generally comes from ammonium chloride. So, if you use ammonium chloride which contains only N 15 level that means the heavy nitrogen the heavy isotope of nitrogen. So, then the DNA that will be formed here only consists of uh, this one initially. Okay. So, the DNA will only be will be this one okay, at this point. Now, if you transfer this bacteria and then you do the you now in the normal medium you grow them in the presence of the normal isotope the light is lighter isotope of nitrogen that is 14 n. So, now if you grow one cycle. So, what will happen now there is this earlier you have this DNA here and now when the new strands of DNA are created. So, you have now the new strands are uh, donated by uh, denoted by this color and this is the old strand a darker dark um, blue indigo blue and this is light blue. So, what will happen in conservative replication that you have a heavy DNA which consists of only N 15 and you have also a light DNA which will consi uh, consist of only N 14. So, there will be significant molecular weight difference between the two DNA uh, double helix. And so, if you do a process what is called centrifugation uh, or sedimentation, you do centrifugation and um, and then uh, then what will happen that the heavier DNA will collect at the at the lower side of that of that of the ultrafugation uh, tube and the lighter one should be at the uh, higher level than the heavier one. Okay. But that is that will be there that will be the result if that is the cause the replication is conservative, but that is not seen. What is seen is okay, let us consider all the three possibilities. Now, if it is semi conservative then what will happen after the first cycle first cycle means when the two strands become four strands then if it is semi conservative then you have 1 n 14 strand will join with the n 15 strand and the same is here. So, you will the molecular weight of these uh, are same and it will be intermediate between this fully n 14 and fully n 15 and so that is why we expect a band in between these two. Okay. So, there should be only one band after first cycle if it is semi conservative and if it is disruptive if it is disruptive say what will happen 
that may be 50 percent of this will be coming from the old strand and 50 percent from the new strand. If that be the case, then also the molecular weight of these DNA will be will be will be similar because it is one this is 50 50. So, 1 is to 1. So, there will be no difference between you have 4 strands out of which 50 percent is the light blue and here also you will have 4 strands and out of 50 uh, uh, and out of that you have 50 percent the light blue. So, their molecular weight will be same. So, the first cycle whatever result you will get that cannot distinguish between the disrupt uh, disparate dispersive and the semi conservative these two modes it cannot distinguish, but it can distinguish the conservative ones. So, the result is that when this famous experiment was done by Meselson Stahl experiment and when it was done uh, what was found after the first cycle that there is only one band and which is higher than the first band which was made from only N 15 labeled DNAs. And so, you have to go for the second cycle in order to distinguish between the uh, dispersive and the semi conservative. Now, if you do that there is another schematic diagram here that suppose these are the old strands D, D mentioned by D and L is the new strand. So, in the first generation if it is conservative you will have two types of DNA D, uh, DD and LL. Okay. So, you should see two bands and that is written here that initially this is the initial band consisting of only DD and after the first cycle you should have two bands. The semi conservative if you have this DD and then semi conservative means D and L are combining with each other and so initially there will be one band that is the case of for N all D only D means the N 15 ones and here if it is semi conservative you should see at little higher level because D L will have lower molecular weight than D D. And for the first generation for dispersive then as I said 50 percent is all covered by the uh, new, new uh, DNA strands and the rest 50 percent is the old. So, you will again uh, you will see that there will be this D L at this point. And when you go to the second generation now semi conservative means you have this D and L, L and L because this L will combine with another new ones L L and then this L will combine with another M 1 L L and this will be L D. So, now what you see that you will get D L that means the original level is there and you will start to see the LL, LL is the uh, is the DNA of lowest molecular weight. So, LL also should be seen. If it is mixed, if it is like dispersive, then what will happen? The initial one cannot distinguish, but the second as you do the second generation, then what will happen that you can consider it as uh, like this that there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Out of this 8, 6 actually comes from the newer new newly generated strands and 2 are the old strands. Okay. So, what will be the what will be the uh, molecular weight uh, expected of this DNA is basically that you should have a, a DNA where there will be 25 per because as I said out of 8 strands 6 are L and 2 are D. So, that means, it is it is that will be 75 percent of L and 25 percent of D, okay. 75 percent L and 25 percent D. So, you will it will be little bit on the lower side of the L L, but it will be in between L L and D L. So, basically what I am saying that if it is if the bands are here for the semi conservative, then for the dis perceive it will be after second generation it will be somewhere here. This is pure LL, this is LD 
and this is 75 percent L and 25 percent D. So, that will ultimately tell you what is the actual process that is going on and from doing this uh, experiment that famous Messels and Stahl experiment, they came to the conclusion that it is actually semi conservative. So, DNA replication is semi conservative. So, that was sorted out. The next basically what we are talking about in replication that there is this DNA strand double helix, they are attached by the the base pair hydrogens, the hydrogen bonds between the bases. So, when now you know that it is it is semi conservative. So, these two strands have to separate, these two strands need some separation to start with, because the new strands have to be created uh, taking the old strand as the template. Okay, taking the old strand as the template. Now, the questions that are that are inevitably that will arise that first of all there is a stability of this double helix. So, you have to unwind the double helix that means, the double helix if I represent it not in terms of helix suppose I represent it this way the two strands. Remember one goes from 5 prime to 3 prime, another goes from 3 prime to 5 prime. So, the first step that is needed is the DNA needs to be unwind that means, double helix have to be converted a portion of the double helix should be converted into single helix, single strand and then new strands can be synthesized on this. Okay. So, you see why it is semi conservative, because finally, you do not have to separate the new strands from the old strands. As the synthesis is, is uh, progressing, then you make these new strands and that will be already tied up to the old strand. So, one of the new strand is tied up with the old strands. So, that um, says why it is semi conservative. Now, that is the first question that what is the who actually does that that means it is who disrupts disrupts this helix there must be something which is this double helix breaker you have to break the double helix at at a particular point and then that needs to be progressed further once this part is suppose over the synthesis then uh, this has to progress so your now, what will happen? Your this point will progress further. That means, if this is your helix breaker, suppose something which is actually a, an enzyme, the helix breaker, it breaks the hydrogen bonds and slowly proceeds ahead, okay. proceeds ahead, and that means as it proceeds, new strands of DNA are synthesized and this is this point is what is called the replication fork replication fork so the replication fork actually moves further down and then opening up again another portion of the dna and that once it is opening up because the next stage this helix this whatever the helix breaker is there. So, up to that point is earlier suppose over. So, now the remaining part will be done. However, there is some complication here, but let us first consider it in a very simple fashion. And so, basically what happens there has to be a an enzyme which will be called helix breaker that is the first step. Okay. So, a helix breaker and this enzyme will be called a helicase, because helicase means something which breaks the helix. Okay. So, that is the number one. Then, the number two is that as you break the helix, these two strands again want to 
really go back to the double strand means if you take it out because of their rehybridization you know there is something called uh, hybridization so if you make single strand out of double strand then then after uh, once the helicase pass on so they want to again rejoin and forming the same base pairs watson creek base pairs so something also needs to be there which will hold this like a hand which will hold these two strands separated because this has to be separated for some time till the synthesis of the other uh, new strands are complete otherwise they will come back and will rejoin or reanil again okay so that is the next question is who holds the single the single strands generated out of the double strand so that is the next question of the double strand now there are proteins which are called single ssb proteins ssb proteins single strand binding proteins sorry ssb s s b single strand binding proteins so what they do they bind here single strand binding proteins and then they stabilize these single strands so that these strands don't fall back and uh, anneal with itself okay or hybridize with the the other one which is separated hmm? and so we we know that what is the driving force for uh, helix breaking there is an enzyme helicase and then what is the what keeps the two strands apart from each other that is the ssb protein single strand uh, single strand binding proteins okay the next question is that um, i could have shown you i forgot to bring the 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 strings i see what happens that when you have a double helix you can do it maybe next day i will show you that as you try to unwind this double helix then what happens these the gaps between these that means the what are called major and minor groups they will decrease and this that will create uh, that will create super coiling uh, ahead of the helicase super coiling okay so at some point of time it will be very difficult to open up the portion of the dna which you want to replicate that will be very difficult okay so uh, now there is an enzyme so that means there is a problem of super coiling now let us sort out that super coiling why there is super coiling because that will happen whenever a helix if you want to uh, take it out you will always see that in front there will be uh, super coiling that means a force which does not want allow uh, further unwinding of the dna okay now this super coiling can be taken care of again by an enzyme which are called dna topoisomerase now topoisomerase what it does when there is super coiling the best way to to reduce that strain that is due to the that is in the chain due to super coiling is to nick the chain to cut the chain at certain point so that you allow the chain to uh, chain to cross the phases that means the bottom chain the chain which is going below the in order to avoid or reduce the uh, super coiling that will turn around and go to the uh, to the top okay and then that means you need a nicking you need a cut at one of the strand and maybe all the time you have to need because as you as the helicase progresses you need cuts at different points as the to reduce the super coiling now this topo isomerase will also um, it it cuts and then also after the uh, after everything is done after the the copying of the dna is done 
uh, that cuts can be sealed again. Okay. So, topo isomer is the supercoiling takes care of the supercoiling. Number 4 is that in case of DNA, when you have a DNA strand like this 5 prime to say, say 3 prime direction, DNA strand cannot be um, cannot be a template to start with. Uh, so, what you need is you are doing a copying of this DNA strand which is un, un owned sorry not this one sorry uh, the other portion is. So, this is the replication fork at some point here uh, and this is the helicase sorry this is the helicase the replication fork is here okay. and the other strand also has to be copied, but that needs that is a little bit complicated we will go to that aspect later on, but first this let us sort this out that DNS if you have a DNA strand then um, the enzyme now the question is who makes this who adds these oligonucleotides one after another that is what is done by DNA polymerase. So, in order to make the because DNA synthesis means making of oligonucleotide chains. Okay. So, and who makes that oligonucleotide chain is DNA polymerase. Why DNA polymerase? Because you are making DNA strands. DNA polymerase works remember DNA polymerase works by from 5 prime to 3 prime direction. So, the 3 prime which that means 3 prime which attacking the 5 prime triphosphate. Okay. So, uh, what happens that if there is a suppose oh, there is a this the problem is uh, like this that suppose you want to synthesize in this direction you think that the synthesis is taking place from this direction from this is your 3 prime and this is your 5 prime end for the complementary DNA, but that DNA synthesis cannot take place because DNA synthesis takes place always from 5 prime to 3 prime. So, now there is a problem in the strand which goes from 5 prime to 3 prime in this direction when the synthesis is taking place when the helicase is moving in this direction. Then there is a problem of copying this or making the complementary DNA. Uh, for the original DNA which runs from 5 prime to 3 prime uh, direction. Okay. On the other hand, there is no such problem with the there is no such problem for the other strand. For the other strand, it is the DNA synthesis can start from here because now this is the 5 prime and going to the 3 prime. That means, it is the 5 prime uh, that means, what happens here that it has got a 3 prime which and there is another oligonucleotide which will have a 5 prime triphosphate that is already done to you uh, already discussed. So, this which will attack the phosphorus here the phosphate and that goes out that forms the phosphodiester linkage. So, one synthesis is not a problem because there is no because the the direction of the movement of the helicase or the replication fork repli as the helicase moves the replication also also moves now in this case to the right side. So, and the synthesis of this uh, synthesis of the complementary DNA for the strands which runs from 3 prime to 5 prime direction uh, that uh, is not a problem because the complementary DNA synthesis runs from 5 prime to 3 prime. So, as the helicase moves the DNA synthesis also proceeds like this there is no problem, but for the other strand you have a problem. Okay. So, now uh, first of all who synthesizes this uh, oligonucleotides DNA polymerase okay. and however, there is a problem problem of directionality. Okay problem of directionality. So, we have to say about how the our system the biological system sort out has sorted out this problem. The, the fifth point is 
that even if this DNA synthesis is continuously done in the case of this strand, which is synthesized from the 5 prime to 3 prime direction, even if that is there, but DNA synthesis cannot take place on a on a strand uh, on a strand which where there is no if there is no portion of any double strand you cannot start the DNA synthesis. I think if you remember the Sanger's method we have discussed about this that there is something which is called a primer. A primer is needed that means DNA polymerase can work only when there is a slight piece of double stranded uh, DNA present. Okay. Then the, the DNA polymerase starts from the from this side this is the your this is your 5 prime side and this is your 3 prime side this is the original strand runs from 3 prime to 5 prime. So, that means you need to have primers the system should make primers. Okay. Why primers are needed? Because DNA polymerase cannot start the synthesis on a bare single strand. There should be a little portion, tiny portion of the double strand. It could be a DNA RNA double strand or it could be a DNA DNA double strand, but in this case these primers are made of only RNA. In this case the primers are made of it is RNA primers. Okay. And these RNA primers are synthesized that means there must be some enzyme which will synthesize this primer. So, these primers are synthesized by an enzyme called primase. Okay. Now, something is written here. So, now what is happening? The both the strands are now called template strands because the strands are separated and they act as a template to synthesize the the new strands, okay, new complementary strands. In one case, there is no problem, the direction matches with the, the direction of synthesis matches with the progress of the progression of the replication fork or the helicase. Okay. For, the, uh, for the other strand, there is a problem, uh, we have not discussed it, but before that we say that a primer is needed for adding the oligonucleotide one after another by the DNA polymerase. So, these primers are made up of RNA primers. So, RNA primers uh, first RNA primers are, are made and the RNA primers get attached to the template the template DNA and then the DNA polymerase comes and start making the starts making the uh, the oligonucleotide. Okay. Uh, let us. Uh, so, there is some, uh, so let us consider this strand where there is no problem that means, uh, where continuous DNA synthesis takes place. Now, this is by the way called the leading strand and this is what is called the lagging strand. This will this is called lagging strand because the DNA synthesis here cannot be continuous. So, they are made in pieces. However, in the leading strand DNA synthesis is continuous. The reason I told you because in that case the uh, that 5 prime to 3 prime DNA synthesis is matching with the progression of the replication fork or the direction of movement of the replication fork and the helicase. Okay. Let me see. Now, this is the reaction that I was talking about that the 5 prime to 3 prime it is the 3 prime OH attacking the 5 prime phosphate and then that increases the chain. Now, let us consider in separate I think best is separately consider the two strands one is the leading strand and another is the lagging strand. Suppose, this is your leading strand. Let us say this is leading strand means it runs from 5 prime to 3 prime direction here and 
the lagging strand runs from 5 prime to 3 prime in this direction. Okay, now, so what the synthesis now is all about? This is the leading again I write leading strand and this is the lagging strand. So, what happens here first there is this RNA primer that has to be synthesized this is RNA primer that is synthesized by primase and then the DNA polymerase comes and adds the, the nucleotide according to the sequence in the leading strand according to the base sequence of the leading strand. And the leading the lagging strand what happens the lagging strand the synthesis has to go from this to this direction from the because this is the 5 prime and this is the 3 prime. So, the synthesis so here what happens first there is this RNA primer this is RNA primer that is made and then the synthesis starts the DNA polymerizes. Remember, this is going in the opposite direction, the replication fork is moving in this direction. So, this goes up to that point that means, the origin of uh, the replication where it started, but then this is continuously moving. So, this has to once this is done along with this RNA primer. So, the RNA polymerase, the DNA polymerase, uh, not the RNA polymerase, the DNA polymerase now jumps back here. Uh, jumps back here because now it has to make the the strand from the five prime from the five prime to three prime direction because it is lagging behind because the leading strand is continuously making whereas it has made and then it it is a dead end here so it has to go back and then again start synthesizing the piece of DNA but every time when it starts it needs a piece of double strand here that means any again a RNA strand. RNA primer it needs. Suppose this is your RNA primer, this is your RNA primer. Okay. So, only one RNA primer serves for the leading strand, but you need several RNA primers to do the synthesis of the of the DNA. Okay. The RNA primers, the RNA primers are by the way joined here, okay, joined to the new piece of DNA. So, then every time uh, it comes to here the starting point of the of this RNA. So, it again goes back and makes the RNA who makes the RNA primer that is the primase the RNA primer is again made and then the DNA synthesis takes place up to this point. Okay. So, at the end of the D what happens is that you have the DNA which are made in pieces or fragments Th that is why this is called the lagging strand because they are the DNA synthesis is not complete. Here DNA synthesis is almost complete except the first primer that has to be removed later on. Okay. But here the DNA is synthesis takes place uh, in, in fragments this fragments that fragment and like this several fragments are there. Now, this is what is called the name of the famous Okazaki fragments, Okazaki fragments. Okay. So, once the synthesis is all done, then what will happen? Then you have to for the leading strand, you have to take this RNA primer out the RNA primer has to be taken out and that will be this should be replaced by a DNA this because that portion should only contain DNA. So, this RNA has to be chopped out broken down making it free and then you add the piece of DNA piece of DNA and this DNA you ligate at this position. So, you get the complete daughter strand of the of the leading complementary to the leading strand for the for the lagging strand there are more work to do because this has to be chopped off this have to be chopped off because here now there are the DNA. So, that will be replaced chopped off and that will be replaced by by DNA, but the problem is 
that there is no connectivity between this uh, part of the DNA and this new DNA that will replace the RNA. So, you have again you have to use what is called ligation. So, DNA ligase comes and adds the these to this DNA. See when there is a DNA piece like this and another DNA piece like this then and there is no base in between. So, then what you need is a joining of these two ends and that is done by that is done by DNA ligase. This is what is called ligation. This is not DNA done by DNA polymerase. DNA polymerase can only do addition from one end and then add all the time. But if there are two DNA fragments facing each other, then and there is a nick in between, then that nick can only be uh, repaired by DNA ligase. Okay. So, basically what we have learned? We have learned that first of all DNA replication is semi conservative that is the number one. Number two is that uh, during replication because it is semi conservative in nature then the two old strands have to separate. So, that first separates okay? and to separate that you need an enzyme which is called helicase. And then to keep this in the separated form, this portion of the DNA in the separated form, you need single strand SSB proteins, single strand binding proteins, which will stabilize the two isolated strands. Then what happens? Primers are synthesized, primers are made of RNA. The RNA primers they bind to the for the uh, they bind to this uh, DNA old DNA strand and the DNA synthesis starts because DNA polymerase cannot work on a on a just a uh, free or only a DNA uh, strand there must be a portion of the double strand. So, RNA primers have to be synthesized and then the synthesis starts. Who does the synthesis that is the DNA polymerase. Okay. There are different categories of DNA polymerase, DNA polymerase 3 the it does the synthesis that means, puts the oligonucleotides one after another depending on the sequence of the leading strand. Okay. Now, there is this leading strand there is no problem because it runs the synthesis runs from the 5 prime to 3 prime that means, it runs in the direction of uh, the movement of the helicase or movement of the your replication fork. The other strand which is originally the original strand runs from 5 prime to 3 prime. So, the complementary strand should run from 5 prime to 3 prime in a direction opposite to the movement of the replication fork or the helicase. So, in that case the synthesis has to be taken in fragments that when the first the RNA primer is synthesized and then the DNA synthesis starts by the DNA polymerase and, but as it goes to the origin of the replication it has to again go back and then again synthesize the RNA polymerase RNA primers here and then start the synthesis of the DNA. Okay. And then when it uh, comes to the almost to the end of the when it sees the RNA poly primer here it stops here again goes back and then synthesize this the prior the primers are synthesized by primase enzyme. So, that synthesizes the RNA primers and then that goes the synthesis starts and then goes up to this earlier uh, your RNA primer. Okay. So, the joining is basically between this point and RNA primer they are joined together this RNA primer and this DNA are joined and this RNA primer this DNA are joined. Okay. Uh, what is not joined is this DNA from the uh, at this point is not joined to the RNA okay? because the synthesis started from this and ended here. So, there is a gap there is a nick between these portions. Okay? Now, what will happen? Now, there is a DNA polymerase which is called DNA polymerase 1 that has this exo that has this nucleus activity that means, you have to take this primers you have to chop this primers off and that is done by the DNA polymerase 1. So, that takes care of this replacing the RNA primers 
by DNA, the correct DNA PCR. Okay, but there is still nicking here. The uh, this DNA piece is not connected to the new, the DNA piece which is replacing the primer. Okay, so after the synthesis, as I said, that there will be um, in this. I think because it runs in the opposite direction, so the new DNA will be like this. There will be a disconnection between these fragments. So, that these are called Okazaki fragments I told you. Okay. So, uh, after this the DNA ligase comes and joins this nicking points. Okay. So, that is that is the whole story about the replication of DNA. So, you see it is a very complicated process so many enzymes are involved. How many enzymes are involved? It is a DNA, it is a helicase the helix maker topo isomerase do not forget about topo isomerase which takes care of the super coiling. Then there is this primase which makes the primers, then there is DNA polymerase there are two types of DNA polymerase one is DNA polymerase 3 which does the synthesis and DNA polymerase 1 which takes care of the replacement of the primer which are RNA primers and replaced by the DNA and then finally, DNA ligase which joins the Okazaki fragments. Uh, Okazaki fragments to make the complete piece of the uh, complementary strand. So, that is the story behind your replication DNA replication. Okay. Thank you.